Hey guys, so today we've got two stories by the same guy. The first one's about a scaly, and the second one's about a neckbeard who actually has a fedora in-game. Not joking. So, as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the end of the video. A group I had recently became friendly with had invited me to be part of a run of the Temple of Elemental Evil. This was the first D&D game I had played in a long time, specifically 3.5. So I decided to play simple and fill a gap in the party makeup. A brute barbarian. His name was HR and was a barbarian who was cursed by Grumpsh to become a mad berserker. Not the prestige class, I'm not that crazy. Who needed to prove his worth by accomplishing 10 great labours to restore his mind and cleanse his soul. Or else be stuck as a near feral monster forever. And yes, this is half orc Hercules. I played him almost like a dog or golem, and to go along with this, whenever HR was commanded to do something, I'd make a d20 roll plus or minus a modifier on how much HR considered the person as a friend, or at least as allies. If it was 1 to 9, then he'd just ignore the order, but above that he would obey without regard for himself. If it was worse than 1 though, he'd react badly. I just want to get this out of the way, that yes, I had gone to both the DM and most of the players, some joined later, and when I asked if I could play like this, everyone said it would be fine as long as I didn't go too far, and since I was just starting to fit into this circle of friends, I was very willing to play it safe. Then came the kobold lover. Oh Skilly. god. Skilly. Yeah, it sounds like a skilly to me. I could call him the bard since that was technically his class, but no. He will always be the kobold lover, for reasons beyond this game into real life garbage involving forcing his fetishes into the game in ways no one felt comfortable, did weird and nasty things to them in-game. And what we learned after all this went down was a real-life incident that could very well be classified as a sexual assault against a minor involving kobolds. The dude had been friends with the group for a while, and I had briefly played with him in Only War, where he proceeded to get drunk, IRL, and walk out halfway through the session, never to return. And that was one of his better moments I had with him. In this game, he played an illusionist bard who focused on mind-affecting spells and such. Which turned out to be a pretty bad build in a dungeon filled with monsters and other creatures whose spells don't work due to either not being humanoid or not alive. Beyond that, in the first session he was alright, helping figure out the puzzles to get to the temple proper. After that is when the dumpster fire began. Inside the temple, we ran into some sort of prison area where two catatonic people were held in jail cells. A guard sitting in a chair doing not much as we just waltzed in. We tried to grill him for info, but had learned something further down that we wanted to investigate. This turned out to be a gargantuan sick bird of sorts. All we knew was that it was hostile and wanted us dead. And this is where a kobold lover showed their true colours. You see, due to emergency situations, Two of our players had to drop the session. Not too bad, right? Maybe, but those were the fighter and the monk, the only two other close combat fighters in the group. Everyone else was a caster or an archer, with me being the last of the front line. And while I did find it epic to have to hold back this massive creature all on my own, fighting tooth and nail to hold it back and kill it, what no one could understand was the kobold lover's decision-making process. Instead of doing one of the key features that all bards can do, inspire courage, bardic music and casting spells, he pulled out his short bow and began to plip at the bird for 1d6 damage, whenever he could hit it with his garbage attack stats. All the while the rest of the group was either casting spells to keep their soul frontline alive, or blasting the beast with magic and debuffs. This went on for 4 more rounds, while the whole party nearly died with the kobold lover refusing to do anything helpful until we were all in the single digits. He finally used an inspire courage, for all the good it did since the beast was nearly dead at this stage too. After the burb, there was a surprise ambush by nine skeletons that ended with a perfect turn on dead from our clerk that saved HR from getting slaughtered. Victory snatched from the jaws of defeat, and no one was dead. Total win, with no help from the kobold lover. Side note. I later learnt from the others that he tends to play blast casters, and the only reason he was a bard illusionist was because he heard about how good it could be in another game and tried to do it in this game, to far less effect. If this was the only time he would be this stupid, 
it would have been fine, but it gets much, much worse. After we head back to the prison to lick our wounds, we talk to the guard some more before our wizard and rogue uncovered magical traps underneath the guard that would do something bad if we mess with them, or the guard in any way. The discovery itself almost sprung the trap. It was that sensitive. But, you see, the DM revealed to us that the guard had a plate of never-ending sandwiches. You wish you had a plate of never-ending oh, sandwiches, yeah. That. Which is why he could always be on guard. And Kobold Lover really, really wanted that plate. So, despite the warnings from everyone, he tried to charm the guard to force him to give him the plate. The guard, surrounded by traps that would go off, even if he studied its arcane construction, let alone cast magic near it. Tick, tick, boom. The whole group gets blasted, with me and Bard getting the worst of it, because the others had made a dash from the circle once they knew what was going to happen. No one died, barely. Not content with this, seeing as how his own idiocy ruined not only our only lead, but the oh-so-valuable magic sandwich plate. The next day we try and break the prisoners out, resulting in the rogue with near-maximum disabled device getting fried for 66 lightning damage. Despite saying this, the bard hands HR a short spear and tells me to stab it into the door and yank it out. When the group asks what's he thinking, he metagames. He says with my strength and health, 1d6 damage per round will mean nothing. Yes, he said 1d6, not 6d6. Hadn't even been listening. As the group is yelling at kobold lover, HR looks at the spear and rolls dice. And since the bard had proven a bad ally and worse friend, he had his points at minus three. Dice. Three minus three equals zero. I proceed to roar in rage and roll a stab since the bard was right in front of me. Dice. Twenty. Confirmed the crit. Kobold lover. What the fuck? Damage dice. Six plus ten times two equals thirty-two. Bard's health. Thirty-four minus thirty-two equals two. The clerk is able to break up the near murder and calm down HR and the kobold lover was forced to heal himself, since no one seemed to think my barbarian was in the wrong for stabbing the guy, who more or less ordered him to stick his hand in a running electric fence. But the best part is the last thing that he would do in this game, and this group in general. By this point, he was on everyone's nerves, but most importantly the DMs, who I later learned had a massive grudge with kobold lover, since he had ruined a previous 3.5 game they both played in. It all came to a head after we fought a giant worm beast thing whose corpse was disappeared by a mysterious and most definitely evil and powerful wizard who seemed to find us amusing. That amusement ended when, as he was about to leave, the bard insulted and shot at him with his short bow and rolled a natural one. Most of the party was slowly leaving the room at this point <laughs> because they didn't want to die, with me and the party ranger holding the line in case shit went down. As the monk carried off the bard before he could do something worse, I made a choice, picking up the ranger and throwing him back to the group so at least he would survive what I was sure was a futile last stand to hold the big bad evil guy for a turn. And as the group hid around the corner, just peeking their heads in to see what would happen, the wizard approached to just out of chopping range and then laughed and congratulated me for my courage before sending my barbarian to his knees as he called him his real name and began to name off his horrid sins. I knew a good scene when I saw it and had my, to this point, creature of beast-style rage break down. As the big bad evil guy taunted me and teleported away, the grip began to wander back in as we all had a pretty good moment, which was ruined when the kobold lover began to break out in laughter and say this little gem. What the hell is this? You're acting like such a faggot rather than the weeper. And that's when the game just stopped. No joke, everyone just stopped playing and started screaming at the kobold lover for being completely out of line. Even the monk, who usually tolerated this shit, began to call him out. He then left in a huff. He later came back and said he'd like to quit because he was bored and wanted to be a part on another game that was coming up. No one shed any tears. The instant he left, the DM describes how the bard explodes into gold coins after his comment about the big bad evil guy being a homo. Which was, yes, another actual comment this guy actually said. And gave me a cursed item. The skull of the furry bard. Minus two charisma, plus two to hit. Later on, this guy would proceed to do some more nasty things. 
and later get kicked from another game before he had a massive meltdown and left the group for good. If only he was the last that guy would get for this game. A little context of why this next that guy is here. It's 100% my fault. While the Temple game was running, I was also part of a Roll20 Discord group for what was supposed to be a dark gothic Victorian setting in D&D 3.5. For reasons related to drama and the GM's own poor scheduling habits, the group broke apart before any gaming happened. Probably a good thing, because beyond one delicate little snowflake who I refuse to say anything bad about, this group was mostly that guy's of some degree. But since we now had a free spot in the temple game, I tried to recruit one of the better members of the group, a young guy I'll call OC, because of what his character was. He was a white porcelain mask and trench coat wearing mute human fighter. All right, V for V for Vendetta. I know, okay. <laughs> ultimate neckbeard yeah. here. He swung around a large bastard sword one handed. He could use a large weapon because he's 7 foot 11 inches. And that was close enough. He said he didn't have a name but had a title The Junkyard Dog, oh god. And how he wandered the earth to avenge his fallen master. Yeah. It reminded me a lot of my first ever attempt to write anime fanfiction. I was thinking anime. I yeah. had anime in my head there, so it is. In the end though, he was a first timer and seemed to be around 14 or 15. So I figured that maybe his weird tendencies was just due to awkwardness or lack of experience in gaming with him would make things easier for all of us. I have never been so wrong. The group was wary of OC. But I was brought into the group by a fellow member to fill the void, so they decided to go with it, since, by now, we were all pretty cool with each other. I, and later, the group's resident D&D expert, helped him readjust his character to the campaign we were in, to the different settings were lower level and his sheet was hot garbage, full of homebrew as well as way more stats, health and skill points than he could have. The dude spent Ours helping OC work with 3.5 and understand a lot of its mechanics, features and how to make character sheets. Didn't matter much, since when he showed up again, he told us all he had forgot to do the changes and just asked to use his sheet and character as is. The DM allowed it and we marched forward. The sign this was going to end horribly though was when OC replied, Okay Papa, What? in a weird submissive tone of voice. <laughs> that makes me ill. Complete silence from the group. <laughs> Before the DM said, Don't call me that ever again. <laughs> Disgust dripping from his voice. The DM in his early mid 20s, and OC is 15, so yeah, weird. Oh. Okay, puppy. <laughs> Please. Please. First thing I should mention about OC's character was that it was a fighter. A very bad fighter. He had garbage mental stats, but high strength for his one-handed bastard sword to go along with his tar shield. He used a homebrew light armour trench coat and mask along with it. I kid you not, a fedora. Oh, oh God. Off. Fuck off. Teleports please. back. <laughs> he also liked to make weird golem-like noises, even after people asked him to stop. <laughs> Oh, this is too good. Kept a bag of never-ending jelly beans, even though the DM says jelly beans did not exist in this world. And kept calling the DM Papa, much to his disgust. <laughs> he never participated in group talk, but liked to do LOL random stuff to interrupt others. During his first battle with the group, we were fighting black puddings. His first action was to run forward to slice one. After the cleric told him what they did to weapons, of course. Cue the sword melting away to O.C.'s surprise. It's okay, I have a spare. Pulls a second bastard sword from his ass. No you don't. Your sheet says you only have one weapon. I told you I have a spare. He continues even as we stared dead ahead at his character sheet. I think the DM was shouting out because he kind of started gaping before saying whatever. The battle was won and we got a magical flaming long sword. No one else wanted it so we handed it to O.C. He then proceeded to say... I place the sword to my faceplate and begin to sniff <sniffs> deeply. <laughs> it's on fire though. I know. What the fuck? DM. Uh, the sword ignites. Rolls 1d6. You take four fire damage. The sword doesn't like you. I pick it up and do it again. The GM didn't even react this time and just gave us our experience before he left. 
No one said anything, but I felt terrible. Thankfully, he didn't show up for the next session, but not much happened. He returned for the second and last game, once again having the same broken sheet for what would be one of the most defining moments in the campaign and the session which earned me the rumour that I have a rabbit's foot stuck up my ass. After miles of rock tunnels, we had found a magical biodome with a forest and a painted sky giving us false sunlight. Now, everyone with even a bit of gaming experience could tell you, a big open area that seems empty and peaceful, boss arena. The thinkers come up with a plan to circle the dome so as to minimise our chances of dying horribly. As they were talking, OC moves his token further in without any support. Monk. What are you doing? OC. I want to find oranges. Monk. Roll spot. 16. GM, are there any orange? No. But I have to find oranges. Why is this boy looking for oranges? Why the fuck does he want oranges? Ignoring the argument, I asked DM if I could roll a spot check. He agrees, and I get my first natural 20 of the night. He describes how I see hidden. Further in the bushes, a large figure who was making its way towards the grip. It's a giant razor boar. And guess who is the closest target? Amazingly, the boar rolls shit on his attacks, and with OC's pretty high AC, he doesn't immediately die. First on the initiative was HR, another natural 20. And seeing this as the best way to get a labour, I charge ahead with my great axe. Roll to hit. Dice. 20. Confirm the crit. Damage dice. 11 plus 10 times 3 equals 63. Round rotation and the boar still misses everything, while the rest of the group rushes into range to fight. Dice. 20. Confirm the crit. Damage dice. 7 plus 10 times 3 equals 51. High on my own success, I asked the DM if, since I've just brought this thing to near death, if I could do an intimidate roll. DM. Sure, you can roll intimidate. Clerk. Shouldn't you get a circumstance bonus on? And that's when I roll the second natural 20 that turn. The DM is silent before he describes how the beast looks into my eyes and falls to the ground, cowering as it tries to roll over and show me its belly. A sign of complete domination and surrender. I roar, IRL. The group is lapping this all up, celebrating, having once again survived what we knew was supposed to be an encounter that was supposed to kill at least two of us since we were not even level 6 yet. As the group pops out some ale, HR takes out his carving knife and begins to carve his name in Orcish into the boar's hide, a sign of his labour accomplished. And this is when OC decides that he doesn't want to keep breathing anymore. He pulls out his own sword and rushes towards me. He says he's going to yank the knife out of my hand, saying it's wrong to hurt animals. Ugh. Yes, but also no, not in D&D. <laughs> At this point, the DM stops the game and asks, Are you sure? After OC says yes, DM tells him to make a whiz save. He rolls like a 16. The DM says, dead panning. This is a bad idea. You have a good feeling this is going to end very badly if you do this. I don't care, I still do it. At this point, the DM was just done with him and effectively gives up trying to stop suicide by barbarian. By now, I've finally broken character and tell him this could end with me turning hostile because he's threatening me and this is really, really important to HR. He just says it doesn't matter and does it anyway. The monk, who by this point had sort of been acting as one of my handlers, along with the cleric, argues how the boar had just been trying to kill us. OC argues, but now since it's not fighting back, it's animal abuse. <laughs> okay. The monk explains some stuff related to me needing to accomplish great deeds to free myself of the madness. But OC still says it's wrong to kill a defenceless animal, which I never once said I was going to do. By this point, OC is in HR's face and says that unless I stop, he's going to attack. And so I have HR roll to see how he reacts to both him trying to interfere with my labour and threatening me. And since at this point, he's done nothing to endear himself to the party and is actively threatening me, he gets a minus 7. Dice, 4 minus 7 equals minus 3. I roll to grapple. Natural fucking 20. Fucking wounded dice or something going no. on here. OC, 10. At this point, I'm just restraining him and doing a bit of non-lethal choking slash crushing damage, since I was hoping someone could de-escalate this in-game. It's at this point the group tries to calm him down like they did before. And it almost works until like half the group roll below a four on their diplomacy, 
with only the cleric and wizard seeming to care at this point, with the monk actively encouraging me to kill O.C. since he never liked this ingrate. This is when I stopped doing non-lethal. To say it was a bloodbath would be undercutting it. O.C. tries to fight back, but he has some of the coldest freaking rolls I've ever seen. And for every 4-6, to six, he rolled... I rolled an 18, 19, or even a 20. It finally ends when I do Sir Gregor Clegane to O.C., crushing his head and mask. The DM jokingly calls out to stop because he's already dead. O.C. tries to get some sort of dignity from his death by describing how his jelly beans fall from his coat. His mask cracks as a lone tear falls. Oh, see that them jelly beans actually just annoying jelly me. Beans. You know what it is? Was it's there not? <clears throat> no, Adam. no, jelly Doctor beans. Who? Doctor Who, that was going to say. Jelly- oh my yeah. god. The monk, laughing his ass off. Dude, he's already described how he crushed your head like a grapefruit. Your mask is gone. You're dead. DM. And like I said, you don't have any jelly beans. <laughs> the session ends a minute or two later with experience for all. Even OC. We asked him if he wanted to make another character, but he refused, and he said he wasn't feeling the game anymore. We accepted, and he left. Afterwards, I apologised for letting both OC in and letting this get out of hand, but everyone said that they were fine with it, since they thought the ending was hilarious. Later that night at 3am or such, OC would pop in, only to leave a long manifesto (laughs) telling us how we were all terrible and evil people for hurting animals, allowing PvP and a bunch of other things that he felt slighted by. He was the one who fucking started PvP. I know, you know, you can't... You can't oh, shut up. You can't try and understand these people. <sighs> Dick. <laughs> when we saw it in the morning, we had a laugh. The DM gave me another cursed item. Cursed Mask of the Weeb. Minus one whiz, plus two AC. Final notes. While this didn't have to end in PvP and me killing his character... In all fairness, it cannot be said that the group didn't try to stop him, nor did we make our grievances hidden beforehand. In the end, he just wanted a big fuck up. He ignored all advice, ignored all help, ignored all criticism, ignored the GM, the players, reality itself, and lost everything for it. Was the end harsh? Maybe. But he refused to accept the game for what it was, and only cared for what he wanted. So the group was very happy to see him go. All in all, still better than the last guy, but I hope to never game with him again. The game ended later when the GM had real life get in the way, but we had a great time until then. Having fought many a great monster and saved many lives, we all still game together and have not had a single PvP since. Well, serious PvP at least, but those are stories for another day. So, I want you guys to tell us, who do you think was worse, the Scaly or OC? Personally, for me, I think OC was far worse. Like, you know, at least the skilly was just useless. Yeah, just, like, you know, I, yeah, I don't like skillies. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, he was I don't just, like furries. I know, <laughs> I don't matter. like furries either. But, you know, he was just useless and just there, whereas OC was just a straight-up cringe word and just seemed to... OC was just pure annoying. Yeah, he, sc- he screamed of just undiluted autism. He and read. not uh, and not read. like the good type. Of, yeah, like the bad type, you know. Yeah. Oh, I got jelly bean. Oh, fuck off, please. <laughs> oh my god. See if someone did that to me, I'd be like, alright, mate, yeah, sure. But see if it kept, it's like, okay, poppy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, poppy. Like, anyway, as always, guys, let us know what you thought anyway. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye. All done.